Hey Ubers, Vivian here with a mixed media video tutorial that I've prepared for Scratch the Darkness. I'm using the May kit called Destinations and I decided to use mostly the color and creativity add-ons for this month to do a little mixed media um, painting. So I just gessoed randomly on the surface of very high quality watercolor paper. In order to do the technique that I want to share with you today, um, you need a surface that is not as absorbent as watercolor paper. I found that the less absorbent, the better. Um, and I'm, I'm just tapping out some of the Magicals mica powders that we got from Lindy Stamp Gang in the add-ons this month. Um, I'm going to tap on the Tibetan Poppy, which is a beautiful blue. It sinks into the areas that are not gessoed with a lot more intensity and um, it's, it's much more vibrant in the areas that are not gessoed, as you'll see as we do some spraying and dripping um, all over the watercolor paper. And the interesting thing about this Tibetan poppy is there's a little bit of yellow, there are yellow flecks in there. So that was a cool little surprise. I also went in um, with my fingertips to dissolve some of the uh, globs of pigment that didn't dissolve from my spraying of water. And I'm just trying to uh, move the pigment on the watercolor paper surface in a way that pleases me and, and seems organic and, and random. While the surface was still wet, I went in with this the mica powder in Rudolph's Nose Red that came in the kit this month and did the exact same thing with that, hoping to have some spontaneous mixing going on on the surface. It may seem completely random what I'm doing here, but I am trying to make sure that I keep some dark darks and some light lights because I have a plan for uh, doing some doodling in some of the light areas and um, going back in after everything's dry and creating some shadows. So I'm sprinkling now my last mica powder the Golden Sleigh Bells, and I used that in my last tutorial for Scraps of Darkness. Um, I don't know if you guys got to see it, but we altered some acrylic to create some cool effects using the um, Lindy Stamping Magical Mica Powders. And um, I'm really liking this sort of upward movement, this vertical activity going on here. So I just went in with my finger and um, got it really inky creating those um, marks on my surface. And then doing it a little bit more with some dripping. And the great thing about the areas that were gessoed is that you can go in with a paper towel and wipe off or, or tap off some of the pigment if you want to create some lights again, if you lost some of your lights. So as you can see here, the areas that were gessoed are very light and pastel -y, and the areas that were not are very dramatically intense in hue. I took some uh, Lindy Stamp Gang mists. The first one that came in our kit, um, in our add-ons, Creativity and Color add-ons, was the Flat Fabio in Rizzo's Rowdy Red. I also went in with some of the Starburst mist that came in the kit called Breakfast Club Blue, which is not quite as intense in hue, but very pretty, and um, mixed the, allowed those to mix on the canvas as well, um, and allowing the reds to mix with the blues to create some pretty purples. While it was still wet, I threw in some more of that light gold mica powder that I'm really liking and I want more of on this piece. So now that we have plenty of light areas here to work with, it's time for the technique. I have this book. <clears throat> I've had it for quite a while. It's called Surface Treatment Workshop by Darlene Olivia McElroy and Sandra Duran Wilson. It's got a... Re 
for the thin size that it is, it's incredible because it's got so many techniques inside. Um, one of them is using alcohol in conjunction with acrylic paint. So I'm diluting some of the Claudine Helmuth black, I think it's charcoal acrylic paint that came in our kit, in our base kit this month. And you want to play with the amount of dilution because um, that's pretty key. And you also want a surface that doesn't absorb um, your media very quickly. Like if it were done on the base watercolor paper or art journaling paper without any primer, this technique wouldn't work. It didn't work for me. And as you can see here, I, as soon as I lay down that paint while it's still wet, with an eyedropper I put um, little droplets of alcohol all over. And it creates this beautiful um, varied circular shapes. Um, and here you have like a, like a black nucleus. It's really cool. Um, so this is going to be very abstract. And I'll just this part is just so fun and fascinating. Um, it was my favorite part of the whole process. And I want to keep soft edges, so I'm just going in with my finger and softening up the edges that were created from my foam brush. So the possibilities with this technique are really limited only by your imagination. Um, they very much reminded me, these shapes reminded me of the poppy seed heads that we've got in the garden now. Um, we, ha I was lucky to be able to start my poppies early enough so that I got really good, um, good showing this year, our first year in our new house. And now um, there's a Lauren's pop purple grape or poppy grape or something like that. I think that's the name of the variety. It's all gone to seed and the seed heads are fantastic. These poppy seed heads in particular, I have a reference photo on my iPhone here. I don't know if you can see. They're very round. They're very full, very voluptuous. And then at the very top, which is where eventually I guess the seeds sort of flow out when the wind blows, um, you have this really cool starburst shape that's very geometric. So that in mass, it's 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 quite a sight. I, I, just, I have to look at it every day. So I decided to do some doodling. After playing with a couple of different nibs, I found that the brush nib on the Faber Castell Design Memory Craft Pit Artist Pen um, worked best for me and, and allowed encouraged me to be a little bit more spontaneous with my gestures. I also did some um, jagged leaf shapes because the leaves on these poppies are also very, um, the edges are jagged like that. So I don't know if you notice, but um, there are some beautiful soft color mixings that happened in our abstract poppy shapes and on the interior of the poppy shapes that I drew. Um, and that was thanks to the time and play we, we had with all the different mists and powders that we did earlier on in the tutorial. Um, and now what I'm doing is just um, darkening up the negative space to really help those shapes pop. Um, so that means I used a um, dilute um, acrylic paint, the same one that we've been using to um, color in all the spaces around the shapes. Um, and that really helps bring out those um, poppy seed heads that we drew. And then um, once that's somewhat dry, um, I wanna keep it all soft and organic and have everything blend. Um, I went into the shapes themselves with an even more dilute acrylic paint to um, create some shadows within the shapes and help them blend into the painting a little bit more. I added in just a couple more shadows and I called this painting finished. I had so much fun preparing this video tutorial for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this technique with the alcohol and the acrylic paint is so much fun to do. Um, it's, it's psychedelic while you're in the midst of it. And I think you could use it uh, 
alone on a white background for some very modern, bold, organic um, scrapbooking layouts, mixed media projects. And you can also do what I did, which is prepare the surface with a mix of colors and then go on top of that with your alcohol and your acrylic paint. This painting was done with Scraps of Darkness's May 2013 kit, Destinations, primarily focusing on the color and the creativity add-ons. Um, so I hope you'll check out the Scraps of Darkness website. And if you're not a subscriber already, subscribe and get those color and creativity add-ons so you can play along with me every month. Um, if you haven't gotten enough inspiration or would like to see more of what I do, you can visit me on my blog. That's www.contadinak.com. And of course, I have my YouTube channel, which I'm regularly replenishing with new videos. Thanks so much for watching and see you guys again soon. Bye.